Hey guys, welcome back to XDA. Today we're going to talk about the step-by-step -step process of what it takes to get a custom ROM installed on your stock device. So without further ado, let's go ahead and check it out. So the first thing I want to do before we go any further, we need to talk about a disclaimer. Whatever you do to your device is really your responsibility. And I say this because neither XDA or the developers that are providing us these step-by-step -step process are responsible for any damage that could happen to your device. When I say damage is either be it because of a wrong process following, meaning you did the wrong files in, the, in whatever way, or be it that you flashed the wrong files from a different device to your device. So please be aware that you need to make sure that you're in the right thread for your device and the right version of your device. Meaning if let's say you're looking at a G4, you don't just go into the G4, you go into the either AT&T, T-Mobile, Verizon, whatever carrier version of your device and follow the step-by-step -step processes there. And of course, this applies to your own device. If you're looking at another device, either be it HTC, TouchWiz, Huawei, um, you know, either an Oppo device, all of those things have forms to be able to follow through the steps. And once you get the form, please read it once, read it twice, read it three times before you do anything. Because sometimes we miss things. You know, we do miss things, especially when we're excited about getting something new on our device. The next thing we want to talk about is custom ROM. When we say custom ROM, we're talking about a custom operating system for your device. And what that means is the inst installed operating system that came with your device is something that you want to replace. So you want to be aware of the fact that a lot of the settings, the functions, and all the things that you did to it are going to have to be reset up, redone again once you have your new custom ROM installed. And before you do anything, of course, back up all your data, pictures, documents, um, applications that have the specific data that is saved to your, to your device, back it up either to the cloud or off your device to be able to restore all of this later. Uh, there are better ways of backing up and restoring once we install a custom ROM and gain access or root access to our device. But since you're running stock, more than likely you don't have all these tools set up there. So you need to link it up to your computer and do it that way. Now, there's different flavors of what ROMs you want to be able to install. And what I'm talking about flavors, meaning is let's say we're talking about HTC or a TouchWiz based device. These operating systems are based on Android and have a custom skin on top of them with specific features. So a custom ROM would be either closer to AOSP, which means more closer to what Google provides us as a, an operating system. You won't get some of the TouchWiz, you know, split screen functionalities. If you're going from a, let's say a TouchWiz Note 4 device, you lose some of these functionalities. Um, and you're getting more other functionalities, but essentially what I'm trying to say is uh, if you like the specific TouchWiz ROM features, you want to move into a custom TouchWiz ROM. And those are also specific in the actual forms, be it also on HTC and HTC custom ROM. And you're also basically closer to the original version, but modified to your liking. Um, and of course, there are other ROMs like, such as the MIUI, which are other ROMs that are basically very different than what you have. Um, and again, there are also ROMs that can come for your device based on, let's say, CM based that are closer to AOSP or even closer to what CM's version of the of AOSP is. And it has its own built in features and more bells and whistles that you'd like to get. Next thing we need to go about is the process of installing custom ROM. So before we do anything, we need to make sure that our bootloader is unlocked. Um, unlocking the bootloader is a step by step process that could be very complicated or very simple. And I say complicated, meaning you have to actually go to the manufacturer's website and get a bootloader unlocking code. So HTC requires you to go to their website, Motorola requires you to go to their website, uh, but not all devices require you to do that. And sometimes different devs are able to unlock the bootloader without requiring you get that code. Uh, getting the code doesn't mean it's a bad thing, it's just that essentially you're telling H the manufacturer that you would like to unlock the bootloader to be able to do some development of sorts on your device. Uh, and that gives you just access to be able to have more control over your device. Be aware and please be very, very careful. Unlocking the bootloader on almost every single device will almost 100% delete everything off the device. It resets the device because it looks at it as if you're unlocking the device, you're getting so much more power over the device that they say you need to start fresh. Again, back up all your information off the device and it's best to do this almost at, at around the time when you get the device so that you don't have too many things on it. So installing a custom recovery is not that complicated, but it is specific to your device. So make sure you find the correct version of the actual recovery for your device. There are different flavors of uh, actual recoveries. The main ones would be uh, TeamWin Recovery, Twerp, or Clockwork Mod. And there are also other derivatives of those two custom recoveries, such as like Phil's Recovery. And it uses the original recoveries and customizes them to devices that maybe sometimes are not supported by the original ones. Uh, installing them is also device specific. Uh, TouchWiz will require you to go through and installing it, you know, using Odin. If you're running HTC, you're going to you need to flash it using the HTC flashing tool. Uh, and if you're running a Nexus device, you can do it via uh, ADB or you may be able to also do it via a Nexus toolkit. So different devices will have different ways of installing it. But the general thread here is that you need to find the correct version of the actual uh, recovery and then make sure that when you're reading through the thread, everybody's able to use it to be able to back up and restore. 
Uh, once you have this installed, you're pretty much set to be able to flash things directly from your device, or at least if at the very least, be able to back up your device so that in case something goes wrong, you can just restore everything back and no problems, everybody's good. Now, you don't need to have root installed on the device when you're actually starting this process of installing a custom ROM. You can have it, so you can technically install a flashable zip that you download directly from either Chainfire or the, the thread that you're looking for for your device. And you can flash it through your recovery and that will give you access to root. But at this point, you're still running a stock rooted device. So at this point, we're still not talking about going into custom recovery, but that would be where you'd be able to insert root if you needed to install it at that point. Or your new ROM could come pre-rooted, so you don't have to worry about that. So without complicating two things, uh, root is somewhat of a sidestep. But if you do need it, this would be the step where you'd be able to install it. Next, we're going to be talking about what files do you need to be able to have to be able to install a custom ROM. Now, we've already unlocked our bootloader, so our device is fresh. There's no, no new information on it. Uh, we already have, obviously, a custom recovery, and we're ready to install our files. The main things you want to download, obviously, are the operating system, which is the ROM. The second thing you want to be aware of is you don't necessarily have to take a custom ROM with the way it was built. So what I say that is some custom ROMs don't come in with kernels and a kernel essentially is the base of uh, the interface between your operating system and the hardware on your device. So that's what controls your CPU, your GPU, the frequencies, the RAM usage. A lot of different functionalities on your system are controlled by the kernel and uh, some devices or some ROMs don't come with those. And if they do, you may not be happy and there's maybe different ones. For the Nexus 6, I can tell you that there's almost three to four different kernels that are pretty popular right now and there's even more that are not really main ones. But when you download a ROM to install on my Nexus 6, I almost always go back to Franco kernel or I can go with code blue kernel. And those are the things that you want to basically be aware of. You're not stuck with what you get, what you get with the ROM. But if you just want to go straight with what the developer thinks and at least has you know, put together and they've tested it in that configuration, you can go with that file. You can separately install the custom kernel later on if you'd like to. Some custom ROMs also don't come with Google Apps or what some people refer as GAPs. And those are things that you want to make sure that you have because when you install a third party uh, ROM, uh, they generally are not allowed to bundle Google applications directly with them. Can you install them separately directly or side loading them? Yes. Uh, but they do provide us the ability of installing the latest version within like certain ones. Last thing we're going to do here is we're going to go into our recovery or go into either ADB or again, the device specific process of flashing these files and you would install your operating system. Uh, generally before installing any operating system on your device, if you're coming from different versions, the developer will require us to wipe system, wipe cache, wipe Dalvik cache. Those things will require us to basically, basically make sure that the base is installing itself and there's no overwriting or complications between the libraries, between the two different operating systems. So uh, follow the step-by-step -step process and you'll get a process exactly you know, what you need to do. You don't need to wipe these three things every time you go and reinstall the same version of the operating system. Let's say you get an update to a custom ROM that you're installing, but you do need to do that when you're changing from one device to the other and some way require you even to reset your device. So again, be aware of your process and check it out. Once we get all of these things flash on our device, your device will boot up and it's going to boot up in a process that it's basically building itself up again. It's going to take a little bit longer. It could take as, as long as about almost 10 minutes to boot up for the first time. Don't worry, just let it sit, let it boot up. If it takes longer than 10 minutes, uh, then something may be wrong and you may have to go back into your recovery or your reflashing process and do it one more time. The main benefit of doing your backup when we installed our custom recovery is that let's say for some reason this doesn't work. You can go back into your recovery, go under restore and restore that backup that you did initially and you're back to where you were before any of this happened. Hopefully this wasn't too complicated of a process. I wanted to kind of explain to you the different steps of where you need to go uh, to get a custom ROM on your device. I generally do this now without even having to think about it. I just make sure that when I'm following the process, it's specific to my device. So if I'm using my Nexus 6, my Note 4 or my LG, I always make sure to follow the step-by-step -step process on the threads. And if I'm not sure about something, I'll ask a question. There is no reason why you shouldn't have, a, have any problems asking questions. Uh, but again, the main thing I would say before you go in and post a question on your threads, it, there is a search function within every thread on XDA. Search for the keywords of the concerns that you're having. Let's say you're having you know, boot loop issues. Search for boot loop. Don't look, don't search for the word that says, you know, problem. If you put boot loop and if anybody else had an issue with it, they'll, you'll see the other comments and then you'll see what people have done to be able to recover from it. Um, or, you know, again, worst comes to worst, you can always just restore your old Android backup, the backup you did with your custom recovery, and you'll be back to stock. So, as usual, like and subscribe to this channel, like subscribe to my channel, and I hope you guys enjoyed this walkthrough process, and I will see you guys soon.